Hello and welcome to The Wargamer and another painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how to paint the M8 Grizzly from Conflict 47, again using the Army Painter range of paints. So here we have the M8 Grizzly I'll be painting in this tutorial and as you can see I've primed it using the Army Painter's Army Green Spray Primer. And this gives us a really nice base colour in which to build up from, pretty much the ideal colour that we want. Now the first step in painting this miniature is to tackle all of the armour. We want to get a nice base colour to work from, then we can add on some of the details and some of the weathering as well. The first step is to wash over the entirety of the armour with dark tone ink, followed by a dry brush over the surfaces with necrotic flesh. With the green tone ink, we just want to make sure this applies across the entirety of the miniature. We want to focus it mainly into the recesses, make sure it pools into there. And I've mixed in some water here as well, so that it's not uh, too overpowering. We want it just really to be uh, bringing out some of the details and not darkening the entirety of the armor panels. So I'm just going to feather this out a bit as well. So we'll be doing this across the entirety of the miniature, everywhere where we have green armor. With the green ink wash completed, you can see you've got this nice definition in the recesses, really brings out some of those detailing. Now the next step is to dry brush over the surface with the necrotic flesh. We really want to just focus this along the edges like so, and just bring out these, these bolts and also along the edges here. And this just really enhance the detail across the miniature. So I've, uh, for dry brushing, if you're not sure what the process is, you put a little bit of paint on your brush and you remove it on a piece of paper. So you've only got a small amount on the brush. And then when you drag it over the surface, it'll just very faintly pick out the edges like so. With the armor areas completed on this miniature, the next step is to start painting the leather shroud around the main weapon there. We're starting off with a base coat of leather brown, followed by a wash of strong tone ink, before finally a highlight of monster brown. So I'll just be painting the leather brown over this uh, shroud here, this fabric section, being careful not to overspill onto the, either the main uh, weapon section there or the rest of the housing. As you can see here, I'm just being very careful around these sections here. I've just mixed in a small amount of water, roughly about one part water to two parts leather brown, and this just improves the flow slightly. As you can see here, I'm just applying it over the top, making sure I get a nice and even coverage. With the leather brown dry, the strong tone ink wash can be applied over the top, and as you can see here, it's just pulling into all these recesses here, darkening the colour, but also really bringing out the detail in the fabric folds as well. Now I've mixed in just roughly one part water to one part strong tone ink just to improve the flow slightly. We don't want to be applying it too strongly. With the initial wash completed, the next step is to apply a highlight of the Monster Brown and we're picking out the folds, as you can see here, the raised sections of these folds. Now I've mixed in some water again here, roughly one part Monster Brown to one part water. And I'm just going to begin very, very carefully picking them out. Like so, we don't want to apply too much at this stage, we just want to apply some nice highlights over the top. The next step is to paint all of the metallic areas on the miniature. Now first of all, we're going to be painting the 50 cal, the arm joints that we've got either side here, also the elbow joints, some of the workings on the legs there, some of the pipes at the back and some of the vents as well. I'm painting all of these areas, first of all, with matte black, followed by a highlight of gunmetal. When painting the black areas, I've added in a small amount of water into the mix just to improve the flow slightly. It makes painting these areas much easier. Now, I would recommend not painting too many areas with the met metallic colours as we want to keep a nice camouflage green colour across the majority of the miniature. With the black areas complete, we can now start highlighting with the gunmetal. I'm just going to be picking out very carefully the edges here. And we want to maintain the predominant colour of black and this will give us a really nice gunmetal colour. So we make the black not look too shiny just enough to show that it is metal. With all the solid areas of colour completed, the next step is to start adding some weathering and damage to the armour. And First of all, we'll be starting off by stippling on some uniform grey before stippling on matte black. So the first task is to start sponging on some uniform grey, and I've got a little bit of packing uh, foam here that I've just dipped into the uniform grey, and I've removed most of the excess. But uh, what we want to do is we want to focus this around areas on the miniature where we would expect damage to occur. So for example, the shoulder pads are going to be one such area. And we're just going to very lightly dab this on just to create some lighter areas of wear. We don't actually want to apply too much. We'll be applying more um, scuffs and scratches in the next step with the matte black. But this is just going to be a very, very subtle layer just to simulate dust and uh, paint that's been worn off. We want to focus anywhere where you'd expect damage to occur, so for example the fists here, around the legs and anywhere where you'd expect damage to occur. So again we'll be using this sponge to just apply some battle damage to the edges and this time I'm using the matte black of course. Now I don't want to use as much as we did last time, I just want to very carefully just add some small flex just to the areas where you'd expect damage to occur, especially around areas such as the fist here. 
I'm going to be very carefully dabbing on some of these black flecks just around the knuckles where you'd expect damage to occur as it was punching through walls and other vehicles. With the battle damage completed, the next step is to start applying some dirt and grime. And first of all, we'll be dry brushing some Monster Brown around the base, base of the legs and other areas to simulate dried on dirt and dust, before washing over areas of the miniature with strong turning to simulate grime that has embedded itself into the surface. With the Monster Brown, I'll be applying it over the feet here and dry brushing it very, very carefully, similarly to how we applied the Necrotic Flesh Dry Brush. And we just want to build this up over several different layers to simulate dust and dirt that's built up over use. So the final step is to apply the Strong Tone Ink Wash into these recesses and this is going to accumulate there and simulate oil and grime that is built up on the surface there. We want to target this really into recesses where we'd expect it to build up, so especially around the legs here, obviously where mud is built up, but then also around some of the gears and workings at the back of the miniature as well, where you'd expect oil and stuff to accumulate. I'm just going to be applying some inside of these vents here, and that'll just really bring out the detailing in there as well. And here we have the completed M8 Grizzly. Now whilst I've concentrated on the M8, you could apply the exact same techniques in this video to other US walkers from Conflict 47. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more Conflict 47 content, please do let me know in the comments below. If you would like to be kept up to date with all of my future content, you can do so by checking out my Facebook and Instagram, which you can find links to in the description below. Additionally, you can also subscribe to me and be kept up to date with all of my future videos. And finally, if you'd like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to on screen now or in the description below. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really help me in producing future content. So until next time, thank you for watching. And goodbye.